go with me, go go. All right, my lovelies. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna do something fun this morning. Um, I'm making a, I'm making another still. Um, you know, uh, just making something that, that works works better. So um, I've got this beautiful stainless steel milk um, milk jug. Uh, I, I think you know, I, you know, we've all got personal tastes, but for me, that's a beautiful shaped bit of steel. Yeah, stainless. Yeah, uh, I've I've been messing around with TIG. Uh, I've been learning over the last couple of years. Just you know, whenever I get a chance to use someone else's argon, I'll have a little go on it. Um, and uh, well, I've got a couple of welders that should TIG, but the one I found in the skip, the arc works on that side of things, but the rest of it don't work, um, so I can't use that for TIG. And then the other welder isn't really a TIG at all, it's just an arc welder that says it's a TIG. So uh, this, I've got myself a uh, Hitbox HD2, HD? HD, HBT 2000 and it's had a lovely little world, it's really taken care of me, you know, I'm, I'm welding up copper and all sorts and stainless, yeah, you won't do alley, but uh, yeah, I'm having a lot of fun with that. Um, I mean, it's, it's around about the cheapest one you can get of a high frequency start um, and, you know, the, the gas valve built into the unit rather than having the little knob on your, uh, on your torch, which is, which is rubbish, the last thing you need to be thinking about, isn't it? Is, Messing around with your knob whilst you're whilst you're learning to TIG. <laughs> right. So anyway, um, for my still, I was just going to make a, a simple um, column still, um, you know, and uh, uh, you know they get they get high high percentages and that they're quite good, whatever. Um, but I I I can't bring myself to do it. Uh, this is such a lovely jug. Um, what I'm trying to do now is make a uh, a nice shapely uh, pot still, um, like the sort of commercial ones. You know, I'm sure you've all seen it. I'll put a little picture in here. Yeah, they're, they're some of the most beautiful bits of metal work in industry. Yeah, like um, I just find them to be a very pleasing shape, and you're obviously in copper as well. It's a a lovely, a lovely warm metal that gives you that nice uh, fuzzy feeling inside. So we're going to try and make something similar to go on top of this stainless jug. Um, and what I've done here is weld two flat bits of copper together. I've put um, some pipe top and bottom, um, and we're going to try and hydroform this. Yeah. So I've got a, a quick connect for the pressure washer. Um, this will take a, a service cock, so we can we can purge all the all the uh, all the air out of this because you don't you don't want to be um, taking air to a couple of thousand psi in a in a situation where the pressure vessel might rupture because that's where you get explosions, isn't it? So it's always important. Um, you know, I've done a lot of hose testing in the past. Um, you know, <laughs> the most important thing to do is get the air out of there. You know, that way you're safe. You know, you might have a little jet of water at 2,000 psi. That's no different to the pressure washer itself, is it? But uh, uh, if there's air in there, then uh, obviously has the potential to go go pop, and we'll end up with uh, with shrapnel injuries and all sorts in it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, um, there we go. I, I've, yeah, I'm, like I say, really loving, really loving this TIG life. Um, uh, I'm not clean and tidy with it yet, but um, you know, just the fact that I can pick it up and straight away uh, <laughs> weld copper to copper is pretty awesome. I mean, that one wasn't even copper; that's brass. You're not supposed to be able to really weld brass, but uh, I'm just using uh, electrical cable as filler rod. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun, isn't it? All right, so let's uh, let's hook it up to the pressure washer and, and see what happens with this. Yeah, I've annealed it, by the way. This has been in the um, in the log burner in the house. I just threw it in there till it went, um, till it blushed, till it went rosy coloured, and uh, and annealed it. Yeah, um, amazingly. Look, that's the residue of gaffer tape. This has been in and out of the log burner, uh, and it's still there, isn't it? That stuff. That stuff. Anyway, let's uh, let's hook it up and see what happens. Okay, let's let's quickly uh, talk about how I arrived at the shape um, before I do it. So. Uh, um, you know, <laughs> this has the potential to be awesome or uh, go very badly wrong. 
right? Um, so I know the, the diameter that I want at this point, yeah? Uh, so you go to the circumference and then halve it and hopefully, you know, you've got uh, two sheets of metal each of which are half the circumference so we inflate it and it goes round and that should give us the right diameter, yeah? So that's, that's what I'm thinking anyway. Um, same with every other point that I know. Um, uh, we've got a bend there. What I've noticed from videos I've watched of people making uh, tuned pipes for two strokes and stuff, it always tucks in. So I'm expecting I've done this at a, a greater angle than I actually want. Hopefully, this will come back in a bit. Um, that's it. The rest of it is just pure guesswork. We're not going to keep this bit on the bottom, but obviously, it needs extra metal there in order to uh, inflate. Yeah, so we're going to cut it off here, but. Uh, we've got a semicircle, um, and hopefully that will allow the rest of it to expand properly. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That's that's what I'm hoping anyway. Let's let's see what happens now. Uh, pressure washer, cock's open at the minute. Let's uh, fill it up with water and close that cock and see how we get on. <laughs> even got their service cock shut and it's already leaking like a sieve. Okay. Alrighty then. Um, do I need to stand back? Do I need to get the camera back? I don't know. I feel a little bit happier if this is on the end of a long bit of long bit of hose but let's let's give it a go. We shouldn't get this exploding. Um, the worst case scenario, I should just get wet, isn't it? <laughs> it's working. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get some goals. Mate. Working quite as well as I'd hope, but we're, we're getting a lot of water leaks. So uh, let's uh, let's weld them up and uh, and see how we get on. Okay, she's uh, she's welded up again, and I gave it an even better annealing this time. I think um, hopefully the welds are softer as well now. Uh, I'm not surprised they're splitting because you know reflecting them from behind really isn't they, I suppose. Whee. Rise it down. Can you see? Can you? Yeah, there we go. Okay, 
do some more welding. Struggling a little bit here. It's, uh, same old welds keep opening up. Um, <sighs> why is this a problem? Don't know. Don't know. These, this is obviously the more the world that's been more acute so far, isn't it? Uh, same with this one on the bottom. You know, I keep on uh, putting bits on it, but I suppose I'm struggling to get it clean. Uh, I'm going to try some flux. Burn some flux into it with a uh, with what? With a uh, with a torch. And get it brighter like that before I before I try and weld it again. something and start marking all these leaks. <laughs> okay. Most of my uh, most of my troubles are coming from the the lower half of the of the still of the of the top half <laughs> lower half the top half <laughs> what are we calling this thing the I don't know um, cone yeah most of my problems are coming from the sacrificial part um, where the pipe got, went into the bottom and a couple of creases I had on the side so I, I started cutting off the pipe to to redo the pipe put a bigger one in um, the feed pipe with the pressure. Uh, and then decided just to open the whole thing up and I think now I'm going to cut a, a new piece of metal um, the circle that I actually want this to fit into the 170mm uh, I think yeah 170 thereabouts um, disc of copper pop that in there and weld that up and then this this bottom half's pretty much done because that's I've just been flexing that and I've you know that's that's pretty much round where I want it and uh, that will instantly cut out all the problem parts and hopefully uh, let me get pressure into this top bit which is the the bit that really needs to carry on forming now. Pissing down the rain, but I, I really don't want to miss uh, I don't know anything. Uh, fun happening on a on video because that's the whole reason we're doing this isn't it hey? Uh, I fancy being a little bit away from this <laughs> okay so I haven't got that much further. I've, you know, welded it up and pressurised it. Like, 
<laughs> a dozen more times, but and we are starting to get a little bit of shape here. I'm just really bored of uh, blowing it up and welding it back together again, you know. Um, you know, how I've learned some valuable lessons, I think. Um, yeah, I think it's quite a complex shape to attempt first try with the hydroforming, you know. And especially seeing as though my, uh, my copper welding skills are uh, embryonic, to say the least. Eh? Uh, so we'll carry on with that. Um, not not with this. I think this is going to get ditched, to be honest. I've got to find some more copper sheet, though. This is my, my last bit of old water tank. Um, it's starting to get a bit of shape. Um, I'm, yeah, I think... Yeah, yeah. Uh, see, see, the thing is, like, once you start getting weld split and then welding on top of them, they, they start getting a bit dirty, and uh, you know, I'm ending up with a lot of porosity, um, which I'm not quite up to fixing that yet. Um, you grind it all out and put a patch on it, but then the whole thing starts getting a bit ugly, doesn't it? And the whole point of this is to make something that um, is functional and looks nice, isn't it? But um, yeah. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll persevere with the uh, with all of it really because the hydroforming's fun, isn't it? Um, we just uh, we just what have to find something else to make my still out of, you know? No big deal, is it? You know, it's all fun, isn't it? It's all fun and games. All right, so <laughs> there we have it. A uh, a bit of hydroforming and uh, you know early days with the TIG. Bit of fun. Bit of fun. Or maybe we can use that. I don't know. No, yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm half thinking if I if I split it back down a weld and then uh, finish it off with a hammer, then it's pointless. I might as well have done the whole thing with the hammer and um, got it a bit tidier. Not that I think I could have done the whole thing in the hammer, so maybe there is a point to it. Yeah, it's got, it looks like a swan with a really long beak, doesn't it? Noise, anyway, all right, there we go. That's it for today. Sorry, but I didn't get something that looked amazing, but you know, it's just always going to be a little bit experimental. Okay, <laughs> I'll see you again soon. Cheers, bye.